Violent crime impacts every corner of Indianapolis. This map shows the homicides in the city in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Numbers show that no neighborhood is immune from crime. Last October, elected officials announced they would commit to using focused data as a way to help the highest crime areas. Fox 59's Courtney Crown tonight is talking to people who live in these areas. And the big question is, do they think this will work? to go clean up the little bit of area of grass that they have and make them an area for them to play. Cleaning up is needles, condoms, baggies. How does all of that relate to crime? When people don't have access to get to what they need, they do whatever it takes to survive. Rose Craig lives in Indies District 13. D13's on the east side from Emerson Avenue to Post Road between 56th and 21st. This was the only area that I could afford to live in. D13 is the second most dangerous zone in Marion County based on data from IUPUI's Polis Center program, Savvy. They evaluate each district's violent crime and the factors that likely contribute. IMPD investigated 47 killings in D13 from January 1st, 2019 through January 31st, 2021. That's roughly 11% of total homicides during this time frame in one of 25 districts. If you're hungry, you're going to find a way to eat. District 1 Counselor Leroy Robinson chairs the council's Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee. He's spearheading this pilot program, which uses data to determine whether allocating resources based on need will bring crime numbers down. Not just IMPD, resources such as funding for jobs, for economic development, for infrastructure, for education. Using Savvy's data, the council will distribute $1.25 million in crime prevention grants to districts with the greatest need. With that index, they gave every district counselor a number. A higher violent crime index equals more grant money. These grants will go to nonprofit organizations focused on district specific factors likely increasing crime. They can focus on youth engagement, homelessness. The Central Indiana Community Foundation, which already allocates the city's crime prevention grants, will ultimately choose which nonprofits get funding. Targeted efforts for individuals that have the highest likelihood of being. Uh, going through that uh, path toward uh, violent crime. District 17's violent crime index is 100 out of 100. This is the Near East Side, mainly between College Avenue and Emerson, below 34th and above Washington Street. It's Indy's most violent and most impoverished district based on the data. One third of D17 residents live in poverty. One fifth of adults don't have a high school diploma. Councilor Zach Adamson says his district needs resources. Sometimes it's groceries, sometimes it's diapers. Other times it's more complex, like job skills training. From January 1st, 2019 through January 2021, 56 people were killed in D17. That's roughly 13% of total homicides during that time period. Folks we spoke to say sometimes crime prevention is as simple as meeting a basic need. We need livable wages. We need education. It's a food desert out here on the Far East Side. Chairman, do you think that we can talk about crime in this city without acknowledging these factors that play into crime? Absolutely not. The hope is this data will prioritize equity over equality when dividing funding. I'm asking our citizens to hold us accountable so how do we see a shift in our budgetary priorities to start shifting budget resources to these areas where the need is far greater than other parts of our city? I hope it will get better. I pray that it gets better. Equal opportunity is so critical, and there is much more information on this important issue. You'll find it at fox59.com slash violent crime. You can find details on crime in your neighborhood with district by district homicide numbers, those numbers dating back to 2014. You can also watch extended interviews with Rose Craig and Antonio Patton, who you just saw. They live on the east side and they talk much more about the link between crime and poverty and what they think it's going to take for high crime neighborhoods to improve. You definitely want to hear what they have to say. A lot more there on our website.